Hello, everyone. Thank you for being on our call tonight with Roger Drummer. This call is sponsored by HerbWorks.com, uh, owned by myself. Uh, my name is Zach, and my business partner, Roger Drummer. For those of you who know Roger or have heard him speak before, he's a wealth of information. And this specific topic tonight, uh, ADD, ADHD, is something that uh, I had and probably still have but was never diagnosed with. And I'm now 52 years old. And the amazing thing is when I met Roger, and actually the main reason why we are business partners, I met Roger probably 10 years ago, and I was dealing with issues that had to do with an imbalanced brain. And I really wasn't sure what that was. But what was interesting was that, you know, Roger had, had given me some information that I've never heard before. In addition, he, being an herbalist, he had given me a tonic, which actually now we make today called TNG. That's why HerbWorks exists. But he had given me a tonic back then that uh, wasn't as developed as it is today, but it completely changed my life in a matter of a couple of days. And I felt it the first time I drank it, and it's been history ever since. I mean, we, we are, our sales are all over the world. Uh, we do we have, you know, a, a good presence here in the United States, but still people don't know about what we do, and people really don't know and understand what ADD or ADHD and how to actually uh, have a positive impact in some of the things that you can do whether you're taking our product or somebody else's product. You know, Roger's going to explain tonight on how to combat some of the issues that you may be dealing with or, or a family member that may be dealing with. So, Roger, um, you're online, right? I am, yeah. I uh, just wanted to make sure <laughs> we had technical difficulties the other night. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, anyway, so like I said, you know, I met Roger about 10 years ago. He changed my life. And um, if if you have questions and so forth, uh, we'll do a short questions and answers at the end of the call. So uh, make sure to write them down. Um, Roger, how long are we going on tonight? About 20 minutes, 30, 30 minutes? Mi 30 minutes. Mi I'm going to try and keep it to 30 minutes. Okay. So if you have specific questions, uh, feel free to, to ask at the end of the call. And Roger, you know, like I said, let's, uh, let's go over this topic because it is an important one. And, and I think more and more people uh, it's almost like an epidemic. You know, there's so many college kids, even on drugs today, that are taking Adderall and everything else. And uh, I, I, I truly believe a lot of that's pushed for no reason. But anyway. All right. The call. Thank you. Let's get started. All right. We're going to be talking about coping with ADD and ADHD. And just like Zach just said, that, the you know, the it's almost like an epidemic. But I think part of that problem is just because Western medicine has this, uh, one of the ways that it functions is by labeling something. Once you label something, you can give a specific treatment for it, which means you can approve a specific drug for it. It doesn't mean that's your best um, path or your best mode of action, but that's how the system works. So I know with most people that system doesn't work for them. It's not, you know, I'm not on here to, to um, rail against Western medicine. I'm just here to talk about what's actually going on and maybe give you some ideas about how to go about dealing with this on your own and then maybe finding someone that could help you out. The first thing you want to do with ADHD, before I even get into talking about what it is, and, and by the way, we're, you know, you'll hear me say ADD, ADHD. Uh, most of the time they've dropped ADD because ADHD includes hyperactivity. That's what it is, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And so they're kind of going with that. But again, there's this rush to diagnosis with so many kids. And some of that has to do with just the way Western medicine works. Some of it has to do with fundings in schools. Some of it has to do with just um, the inability to actually look at alternative ways of figuring out what's wrong with someone. And this is part of the problem with Western medicine also. But I want to throw this out there because this is truly how I feel. Western medicine is, is amazing in a lot of ways. What they don't really um, do well is going into deep diagnosis or getting to the root cause of anything. I, you all know I'm trained in Chinese herbology, and that is is how they really attempt to do everything, is to look at what the root cause is and fix that and then let the body adapt and fix itself. This is one of the problems Western medicine has with Chinese medicine because it's not just direct 
pill for this, pill for that standard treatment. They're looking at someone, even if it's arthritis, you might have six people come into the same person and get six different formulas because their symptoms originate and are slightly different. They originate with a different problem or a different root cause and they manifest slightly differently. So that's kind of just the way I look at things is what is actually going on. And I think you find this with something called functional medicine. And this is something I want you to all know that if you're, if you're having extreme difficulties and you wanna find somebody to help you that looks at root causes, look or Google functional medicine. It's a, it, it exists within Western medicine, but it's more just like the name talks about. They look at what is happening at the root cause and correct that and let the body come up to its normal or what you could say it's normalizing homeostasis and start to deal with all the issues. Because you might find out that you have a very small problem with ADHD made huge by six or eight different things that nobody's paying attention to, right? And it's all part of what you have going on. Now, ADHD is a real medical condition. And it's, you know, it's, it exists and it's, it's out there and it's becoming epidemic again because I think that they're just a rush to diagnosis. But a lot of it is real and even the drugs that they give it to it right now, which are mostly stimulants, um, it's a type of um, amphetamine that functions closely to your co as just like cocaine, but that probably works in 10% of the people that have it. But again, what about the other 90% that they're giving it to? You know, I've talked to too many people when I was practicing in L.A. who were just put on these stimulant drugs when they were little kids. And, you know, now they're into three or four different drugs they were taking because you just become used to being in a hyper-stimulated state. And it's almost impossible to get off of that. Uh, so you want to look at alternative ways of dealing with it, but you also want to look at maybe you're having this diagnosis and it's not actually right. And this again brings you back to functional medicine. There's also a famous doctor, you can see him on PBS once in a while, his name is Daniel Amen. He's an MD and a neurologist, but what's fascinating about him is that he has classified ADHD as having six different classifications, right? So there's six different types depending on what part of your brain is not actually turning on. So they all know that in all these conditions, ADD, ADHD, is that the frontal lobe of the brain is not being activated, meaning that the part of your brain that's involved in executive decisions, in creativity, imagination, uh, really the part of your brain that overrides the stress response doesn't turn on. And when you try to concentrate someone with one of these conditions, when they try to focus on something, it gets worse, it almost shuts down. Whereas in a normal person or someone with a highly functional brain, that area of their brain will light up. There'll be increased blood flow and energy flow to that part of the brain. Well, in people with ADHD, it just gets worse. It's almost like it shuts down and it becomes frustrating and they start to withdraw and look for other things to do. Right? It's just a normal patterning. Well, Daniel A. Mann has found out that there's six different types, according to his studies, and he's done thousands and thousands of brain scans that show in these six different types, different area of your, areas of your brain will light up, and that will be your predominant controlling part of your brain. So there are ways of looking this up. He has an, an excellent book out you can find on that. You just look on uh, at any book site for Daniel G. Amen. It's a real easy name <laughs> to remember for most people. And uh, look for his books. It'll, it'll just be about the six different types of ADHD and ADD. But what is fascinating about all of this and all these studies is that they do know that it's the frontal lobe of your brain that does not turn on. Now, why is that fascinating to me and, and why should it be fascinating to other people? It's because that's the part of your brain that you turn on with certain activities. I did mention creativity and, and imagination and, and willpower all has to do with the frontal lobe of your brain. And there are things that you can do 
um, on your own that will turn that on. One is meditation. Meditation is a is a exercise that naturally opens an energy center that's in the front part of your brain, which activates the frontal lobe of your brain, to where you have an easier time of seeing the bigger picture in life and keeping that area of your brain active. The longer you do it, just like anything else, you could, if you started playing ping pong tomorrow, you won't be as good at it as you will 10 years from now. It's the same way with meditation. You start tomorrow, you'll just start to activate something five years from now, a year from now, five years, 10 years. That part of your brain can become highly active for long periods of time, even after you're done doing it, because it brings an energy and awareness to that part of your brain. That's also a part of your brain that has um, deals a lot with the neurotransmitter dopamine, which is why the stimulants they give you have such an uh, immediate effect on helping someone to focus and pay attention, because dopamine is a frontal lobe neurotransmitter that helps you to not only power up your brain, but to be have more focus, it's easier to pay attention. All these different things happen when you have uh, a highly functioning level of dopamine in your brain. And dopamine is, is built from having a diet that's centered on protein, but especially protein early in the morning. If you want to know more about that, look at one of my talks that I've done on, on controlling sugar cravings. That is all about how to turn on dopamine in the front of your brain. And since I mentioned that, uh, you kind of get the idea that a lot of this could be related to your diet. So if you're born and you're slightly falling into that pattern of ADHD, and now you're falling into a pattern of terrible nutrition and high sugar intake, especially early in the morning, and all the things that go with that, then you're just feeding into that condition and, cr and making it worse. And again, maybe you're one of those people that 80 to 90 percent of your problem is just your diet and your inability to um, detox certain chemicals from your food because your diet's so poor that feeds in to that slight little bit of underactive frontal lobe of your brain and a slight tendency to have ADHD. So all these things come back to diet. They come back to your own um, behavior with a lot of things that are related to food. And then it also even goes back to where, you know, actually goes back to the parents and how they ate and how you can, the, really the first step to avoiding all these things, it doesn't matter what type of nervous system disorder it is, is the diet of the person who's having the actual baby. And so we're gonna get into that too tonight. But remember, it is a frontal lobe disorder and anything that you do to bring attention to that part of your system um, will benefit your condition or your if you're diagnosed with this condition. But also there's, other things that you can actually be doing. You know, Zach mentioned that he had his life changed because of a drink that I make in market called Tian Chi. And why is that? It's because a large um, section of that actual formula is designed to increase dopamine in your brain and to bring the level of activity to the frontal lobe of your brain just like you were sitting down to meditate. So it's what we call putting you in a position to have a different experience because why because your brain is focusing up in the frontal lobe and not falling down into the area of your brain that's all about fight or flight survival and being caught up in stress all day long because for someone with adhd you have a natural tendency to be in that stressful point anyway so anything that you can do to relax your brain and also speed up the way that it functions, because dopamine is, is, does have an effect of helping speed up response and focus in the brain. And also there's nutrients in Tian Chi like choline and B vitamins that help your brain just to process information and speed up the way that you process information. So all these things are beneficial, and this is probably why Zach had such a great response to the drink, because it calmed the underlying tension of knowing that you're having troubles processing information and paying attention, and all of a sudden you have the nutrients there 
to actually help you to do that. And we're going to cover a lot of that tonight too because it's very important because I want to focus now on what you can actually do to help yourself or to help your children with this actual condition. And just a little more background though, which makes it really hard to, for a lot of people to, to understand what this is. For a long time, this was never even a labeled medical condition. And what was really fascinating to me was that the guy who did most of the research and got it labeled as a medical condition admitted before he died that it was basically not really a condition at all. It was just something they put a label on um, to go through that whole process that I talked about earlier about how the fact that if you don't have a label, if you don't have a condition, you can't make a drug, you can't market anything, you can't get it covered by, you know, it's a long process. Um, some of the stuff that's going on now today, and you'll find this with people that, that are naturopaths or people that are practicing functional medicine or even practicing Chinese herbology, is again looking at the root cause. And there was a doctor who was who focused mainly on child health, and his name was Dr. Lyndon Smith, and he had a really amazing way of looking at ADHD. And he hated Ritalin and Adderall and all these things because they basically function like cocaine in the brain. But what he always said about everybody that had this condition was that it was due to the fact that the brain was missing a particular enzyme that stopped it from um, performing at the level that it was supposed to. And that particular enzyme um, was responsible for helping your brain filter out information. And so he said that if someone takes a stimulant and their brain does much better with this diagnosis, that's a sign that they're missing this enzyme. It was underproducing an enzyme, and the fact is it was basically you could treat that with nutrition. He was big on looking at magnesium and using different uh, omega-3 fatty acids, but he was real big on magnesium as this underlying cause and how you then get the brain to produce its own chemicals to start filtering out stimulus. In fact, one of the things that he pointed out, which is very fascinating, is that it tends to, the people that tend to have ADHD have a very high intolerance for being tickled. In fact, they just kind of go crazy over it. And so it was a sign to him because what is tickling? It's your inability to filter out unwanted stimulus. And so there was a connection between all of that. And so he was, um, you know, basically the pioneer of having nutritional testing done to find out what your child is actually missing um, to figure out how to proceed with the treatment of what was actually going on. And this again takes you back to what functional medicine does, what naturopaths, you know, specialize in. And that's one of the things I want to talk to you about tonight, what you can actually do on your own and what pathways you can proceed down to look at what to do for your kids and for yourself. And again, first off, I want to mention that if you have children, anybody that's listened to this, who's um, going to be planning on getting pregnant and wants to um, you know, ensure that their child or uh, has the greatest chance of succeeding in life without a nervous system disorder, you should have a talk with them before they conceive and, and make sure that they pay attention to a few basic things. And that is that they eliminate all pesticides in their diet. And I'm sure you know that most people don't go out of their way to consume pesticides, but the amount of pesticides in the normal, typical diet in America is so frightening. And it's become even worse in the last 30 years because of all the glycophosphates that are sprayed on crops now. That's because of the fact that that particular pesticide works so well with genetically modified food. So anything that's wheat or corn, especially those two foods that are not grown organically, um, have been grown and produced genetically modified to be able to accept very high levels of glycophosphate. And so they're just programmed to do this. And glycophosphates 
create a condition in your body whereas it kills all the gut flora in your system. That's one of the ways it kills bugs in the environment. It, they take it inside and it disrupts their digestive system and it literally bursts. And one of the things you want to pay attention to as you're conceiving and then going through the nine months of having a child is that you pay attention to your own gut flora. In other words, taking probiotics to make sure that you have a very healthy dose that you can pass on to your child. And one of the things you want to do along with that is avoid pesticides, eat organic food. Uh, pesticides will disrupt that, so will pharmaceutical drugs, over-the-counter medicines, chlorine in your water, fluoride in your water. All these things disrupt your gut flora, and it's very important to the unborn child that you do this to make sure that you're passing on an incredible gift to them when they're born, and it'll be one of the things that protects them throughout their whole life. So you want to pay attention to toxins. You want to play, pay attention to probiotics. There's a couple of nutrients any expectant mother should pay attention to because they're so integral to the child's nervous system. One of them is choline, which is a, a food that exists in eggs in very high amounts, it's about 100 milligrams in an egg. And there's not that many foods that have high amounts of choline in it besides eggs. There are some, but just pay attention and, and look into sources for choline in your diet, very clean sources of choline in your diet, uh, because it helps you to produce the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, and it's very integral to um, all your cellular membranes and nerve growth in the brain. Uh, another one that's tied right in with that is omega-3 fatty acids. Make sure that you're taking an omega-3 fatty acid supplement with a high amount of DHA every single day. It's been shown throughout all kinds of studies that the amount of choline in your diet and the amount of omega-3 fatty acids in your diet will have an influence not only on your IQ, but also on developing um, memory-related issues with your brain later on in life. So it's one of the most important things that you could actually do. And because in this country, we're, we're constantly being scared about eating certain foods because of heart disease, even though that, that theory has, has gone and died many years ago, they still cling to it uh, with your cholesterol issues. But eggs are no longer um, holding a very good position in the American diet. And you should pay attention to that and consume some eggs every week. And uh, this is one thing that I, I don't understand about most people's diet, and I want to throw it out there. Uh, pay the extra money to buy organic eggs. Everybody will go squeamish about $4 for a dozen of eggs. But look at it, folks. There's, there's four to five meals in a dozen eggs. Um, $4 is nothing for that. Uh, if you're lucky enough to live in the country and you know a farmer that's feeding his chickens really well and you're getting some eggs right off the farm, use those. Uh, they just have such an incredible amount of fatty acids that are developed through the process of making an egg that's so important for your brain and it protects your heart. And it's one of the greatest foods you could actually ever eat as a preventative for other issues that will happen later on in your life. So that's how that's the most important thing you can pay attention to. I know every anybody usually in this country that's expecting or going to have a child will take a multivitamin anyway, and you do need those B vitamins for development of your nervous system. We're all familiar with folic acid, but you have to pay attention to the other B vitamins too because they're integral to developing your nervous system, and this is so important as the child's developing. Um, it's much easier to treat be preventative with something than to treat it after it actually happens. So once it actually happens, here's the things that you really want to pay attention to and what you want to go to your doctor or health practitioner to be able to figure out how to help your own child or yourself. And one of the things you have to realize is that everything you do affects your brain. This is something that um, is probably the greatest in my opinion, um, branch of natural medicine or health that's coming out in the news a lot lately is how everything in your entire life 
affects your brain. It doesn't matter if it's your diet, the water you're drinking, um, the supplements you take, but also the movies you watch, the things you do for, uh, as your hobbies. All these different things have some effect on your brain. And you have to look at that and realize that there's certain aspects or steps you have to take to be able to protect your brain. One I mentioned already is that you want to make sure that you're um, you're having sufficient choline in your diet, taking omega-3s. You want to avoid toxins in your diet. So if you have a kid that you have any idea that they're having behavioral problems, you have to remove the chemicals from their diet, and you have to make sure you're removing the, the chemicals that are just pesticide type. You, you want to make sure they're not having any food additives, MSG, aspartame. Both of those things stimulate your brain in a way that's not healthy and causes you to have neuron damage in your brain. Believe me, you don't need it. Uh, if you're out buying most fast food pizza, most fast food, um, that type of food has a, a heavy amount of, of MSG put into it. It's the only way you can make a pizza for $5 that actually tastes good is to dump chemicals in it. It's just a fact of life. So if you're doing that and you have a kid with behavioral problems, avoid it. Take the extra time to make your own, buy clean pizza, buy organic frozen pizza, whatever you want to do, but you have to avoid these chemicals. You want to go on an anti-inflammatory diet. I know that sounds like a lot of work and a lot of, you know, what exactly, how do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple. You buy organic food, you eat a lot of vegetables, and you avoid just common things that cause inflammation, which is what I just mentioned, pesticides in your food, food chemicals they add to your food. The old funny story about how if you're looking at a label and it has more than five things in it or three things you can't pronounce, don't buy it. Um, one of the most common uh, things that cause inflammation in your body is gluten. You know, this is a hard one for kids. I know I had a daughter that was sensitive to wheat and we tried to remove all gluten from her diet and it was really a problem because she was only three and she lost 10 pounds and you know we had to weigh the difference between what was better for her walking around that thin or the wheat allergy so we kind of went back to uh, serving her wheat not as often cleaner versions of everything and we were eating a pretty clean diet anyway so it's it's a little tough but you have to clean these things up in your diet and I will tell you something that I discovered on my own in the last few months, and this might benefit some people out there that are trying to get off gluten but just can't seem to do it or they want to try it with their own kids. There are new studies showing that if wheat is fermented, that the gluten and proteins break down in it much differently, and it doesn't cause the same reaction in people. I've experimented with this myself, and I'm going to do a future call on it. But if you find bread that's fermented 24 to 48 hours, which, you know, it's like sourdough bread, you can tolerate that. So if you have a kid, you're trying to change their diet, and, they, you know, the bread's the big issue, because it usually is with kids, um, just get them on at least that type of wheat and only that type of wheat. So you have something in their diet. You're not taking everything away from them, and it'll have a much greater response and, and cause, you know, a much it'll turn an, an inflammatory disaster type food into something that's actually tolerable in your system. So you want to look at that inflammatory food, remove environmental toxins. Look at how many antibiotics maybe your child has been on. If they take any antibiotics at all, you have to do something to put their system back in order. A lot of kids these days just aren't born with good gut flora because of the diet for generations of their parents. Also, they could have been born, um, you know, C-section, which has a huge impact on that. They might not be breastfed. All these different things happen. You have to pay attention to that and have them tested. A lot of your neurotransmitters are produced in your gut, and it has a huge influence on your brain. So anytime they're on a probiotic, or I mean on an antibiotic, you have to follow that up with a few months of probiotic. And if you can get them to drink kefir, especially um, plain kefir in the grocery store. I know the Lifeway brand is, um, is actually made, even though it's not organic, most of it, it's actually made from grass-fed cows, and it's a very healthy product. 
And it's one of the most potent probiotics that you could ever take, and it's available in any grocery store practically in America. So that's a great way to start. Kids will often drink that, even if you have to buy one of the sweeter ones that has some fruit in it. But if you can train them earlier to like the plain one, no, hardly any sugar, uh, amazing probiotic. And that's something you can make on your own. You can actually buy the grains and make your own kefir. It could be one of the best things that you ever do for your diet. The other thing I mentioned earlier about omega-3 fatty acids, there's studies that have shown that almost when they do groups of children and they give them omega-3 fats, animal omega-3 fats, in other words, DHA, DHA and EPA that's found in fish oil, everyone improves within two months. An incredible leap in their behavior because why is that? It's because 60% of your brain is made up of DHA. This is why when I mentioned about how the preventative issue with people that are expect gonna, you know, they've decided to have a child, how important it is for the mother to have omega-3 fats and choline in their diet, because eventually that brain will be 60% DHA. You can have a huge influence on how the brain develops, especially in the last three months, the last trimester of your pregnancy is all about protein, DHA, choline, those types of nutrients. It's all about brain development. And then the, once they're born, that first two years, all about brain development. What are you giving them to help grow their brain and to um, create a brain that is going to be the healthiest it possibly could be? And that that little window, the last three months and the first two years, is is laying the groundwork for the rest of their life. That has such a huge influence. Uh, I will mention vaccines, and again, I'm not anti-vaccine, but uh, I personally, if if I was going to have a child today, if I have a daughter coming into the age where she might be uh, um, getting married soon and having a child, the first thing I will tell her, if you decide to go the vaccine route, spread them out one at a time, one every four to six months. Um, it's too much of an overload of the chemicals being put in their system, in my opinion, that um, could combine or be what I say is the, le the straw that broke the camel's back as far as your nervous system. And that might be the reasons why they're making these connections between vaccines and nervous system disorders. There is a bit of mercury and aluminum in vaccines, even though they told you they removed it, they actually haven't. And so... Uh, when you consider the fact, and this is a known fact, that the average child comes in with over 200 known toxic chemicals in their bloodstream at the moment they're born, then adding another few more, especially one that's as toxic as aluminum and mercury is to your nervous system, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And so uh, if you can get some that don't have any of those chemicals in it, that would be fantastic. But at the current moment, um, that's something you have to work out with your doctor. It could make a huge difference just spreading them out. You want to look at um, B vitamins for your kids. Again, why is that? Because B vitamins are involved in your nervous system and how it functions. If you don't have them, the brain can't process things like tryptophan from your food, make serotonin, which is the calming chemical in your brain. Uh, it will not be able to make enough melatonin. You won't be able to sleep properly at night. One of the most important things that you should do, uh, have your child tested for nutrition, because you'll find out all these different things. Their levels of omega-3s, their, their levels of, of uh, minerals in their system. You, know, you wanna have all of this tested because if you don't have enough zinc in your diet, or if you're living in an area of the country that just doesn't have much of that that you naturally uh, uh, obtained from foods. Zinc is probably one of the most important minerals that you could ever take into your system for anyone, especially kids, because that mineral has to be present for you to detoxify from heavy metals. If you don't have it, then your body will have a very hard time dealing with mercury, aluminum, lead, all these different chemicals that might make it into your diet or you might be exposed to or you might be getting from you know, fish or 
whatever source it actually comes in. They even add aluminum to water these days in municipal water systems. If you don't have enough zinc in your diet, you will not be able to bind with that and create the enzymes needed to process heavy metals, and that'll have a huge burden on your brain. And so that's one of the most important things. This is why it's, again, important to take a multivitamin while you're pregnant uh, that has all the B vitamins you need, but also trace minerals in it and a decent level of zinc. This is why zinc is important once in your own diet. This is why you have to pay attention to certain foods that have zinc in it. It, it's just one of those things you have to pay attention to because you won't be able to go through the process, which is a natural process your body does, of linking up with heavy metal toxicity in your food and being able to move that out of your system without it damaging you. And one of the things all those heavy metals do, they're famous for, is damaging your nervous system and damaging your brain. So if you have a kid or it's yourself who has one of these conditions, ADHD, you want to make sure that you go get tested for your levels of all these minerals and to make sure that your immune system and your detox system is working at its best level. Because if you're not, you're going to have a, a ton of problems and you're not really going to make any headway into this whole thing. If you think a stimulant's going to take care of that, it's just not going to do it. Uh, your body has to be brought up to par, and more than likely, you'll be able to tell because your kid might be manifesting, you know, a lot of colds. They might be having a lot of allergies. They might have skin conditions, all related related to toxicity and and low immune system function. You just have to have it tested. Things like low magnesium will cause anxiety, hypersensitivity to noise, uh, inability to relax. Uh, all these different things that are just part of the syndrome or part of the symptoms that they talk about with ADHD anyway. And so you want to be able to test for food allergies, you test them nutritionally, test them for gluten allergies, heavy metals, molds, any of these things that you have to have them all tested for it. Just don't take a diagnosis from your doctor because, again, it's not going to lead you to the what's actually going on and that is most of your syndrome could just be your reaction to all these other things. Uh, I want to kind of wrap it up because I know I'm, this is a huge topic, and I'm just trying to get it to where you can understand there are things to do for yourself. Again, look at the fact that they've done studies that show that the mother's use of cigarettes, alcohol, pharmaceutical drugs during pregnancy increases your risk for ADHD. I think that that would actually just move on over into your risk of developing any nervous system disorder with your child, right? So again, what does it come back to? Nutrition, protecting yourself. Nutrition not only protects you from things in the environment, but really good nutrition doesn't have all the toxins from the environment in it. You know, it, it's amazing. You could be eating a purely organic diet and still have high levels of mercury in your diet. This is because there's so much mercury, it's so prevalent in the entire um, country, in the entire world, really. It's so prevalent that even your organic food can have high levels of mercury in it. So this is why, again, why do you pay attention to things like zinc? Um, different foods like chlorella, is important, but zinc is the most important because it feeds the enzyme detox system of your own body and brings it up to par so that it's able to deal with these things that you're exposed to that you don't know anything about. Selenium's another mineral. You know, I'm from Ohio. Ohio happens to have one of the lowest amounts of selenium that you could ever find in the soil anywhere. Then it relates to high levels of cancer. Why? Because selenium, like zinc, is another trace mineral that your body uses to make enzymes to bind with things and detox from things and pass out of your system in, in a healthy way so it doesn't bother you. Um, so you have, want to make sure that you're eating something with selenium in it, you have it in a multivitamin, something that you're using on a daily basis to protect yourself. Um, I happen to love Brazil nuts, um, and Brazil nuts, have the highest amount of selenium in it of just about any food you could actually eat. So having four or five Brazil nuts will bring your levels of selenium up 
to a really healthy level if you're not taking something else that has it in a supplement. I find it fascinating. You can find one particular food like that, but you know it's one of the wonders of healing and 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 being in the natural food industry and just being into food. You learn so many different things about all these different foods and how they actually help you. So I want to real quick go over things for you and your kids. Make sure that you're eating real food. If you don't have the money right now to go out and test for allergies, get rid of gluten and get rid of dairy. Everything else your body will probably be able to handle for a while. And so that's the easy way out. Eat natural food, eat organic food. That way you'll limit, eliminate most environmental toxins. You'll eliminate most added toxins and chemicals they put in food to make it taste better. And if you can just get a handle on gluten and dairy, then you've just made a big leap in, in uh, taking care of yourself. Address your deficiencies. Find out what your nutritional deficiencies are and take care of them. Go through the process of finding out what you need, what your body is lacking due to your own environment and diet, and take care of it. A lot of your symptoms could just be something, two or three things that you're missing. And you'd be surprised how in a month or two things just start to disappear. Um, fix your gut. I talked earlier about taking kefir or making your own kefir. If you can't tolerate that, get some probiotics. Do something to take care of your gut health. They're finding this with a whole spectrum of nervous system disorders that um, autism is one of them, um, ADHD. It's related to how you make neurotransmitters. The health of your gut plays a huge role in how your brain functions every day. Eat an anti-inflammatory diet. If you're having, having trouble figuring out what that is, it's basically mostly vegetables, a little bit of fruit, and avoiding the things you're allergic to, gluten and dairy. That's the easy way to start. Anybody can start on that process. Paying attention to your sugar cravings. You want to make sure that you start your day with protein. If you have sugar cravings, watch my talk on sugar cravings. It'll teach you how to go through the process of eliminating them, and that process will peak frontal lobe activity in your brain. It'll turn on dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter that has most of its function in the frontal lobe, and help you to start moving up and activating that part of your brain. It also will help stabilize your blood sugar, which is something you want to pay attention to. It has a tremendous impact on your health, and if you're having sugar cravings, it's a sign that something's in balance anyway, and you already have or have been diagnosed with a brain disorder, so you need to pay attention to all these things. Antioxidants. You want to make sure your diet has a good level of antioxidants. My opinion is it's impossible to get all the antioxidants you need in your system from your food alone. You have to supplement something. Um, there is one out on the market that's really important for detoxing from heavy metals, has a, an amazing um, impact on your brain health, not only of getting rid of inflammation, but also it impacts um, detoxing certain chemicals from your brain, and it's called alpha lipoic acid. It raises the level of glutathione in your system, which is the master antioxidant for every cell in your body. And it's not just any alpha lipoic acid, pay the extra money for the one that's called alpha R, the letter R dash lipoic acid. Um, that is the best alpha lipoic acid you could buy and the one that you'll absorb the most of and it has an immediate effect on your system. It'd be better to take one capsule of that a day because of its higher quality than to take four or five of something else because it's about 40 times stronger than in any other alpha lipoic acid. And by stronger, what I mean is that you just absorb it, and it has a higher level of activity throughout your entire system, and it crosses the blood-brain barrier. So find a doctor. You know, look at your diet as something that keeps your cells healthy and active, and it helps you to detox. The first step in detox is not putting toxins in your system. Find somebody to help you. This is just a beginning step. Buy the book off Daniel Amen. Study ADHD. Find the six different types. That's the first step to becoming educated so you can find the person who's going to be the right person to help you with what's going on. And then if you 
you're having trouble in your area, depending on where you live, finding that one person that will help you out, Google functional medicine. There's a place on that website for functional medicine that will that you'll be able to put your um, your postal code in, your zip code, and it'll show you anybody in your area that's practicing functional medicine. That's a great place to start. But I would also start by uh, getting a hold of the book from Daniel Amen. All the things I cover tonight are things you can start on your own tomorrow. Right? The diet, the detox, making sure you have certain levels of nutrients. You have to start something on your own. Don't let it just become this idea that you can go buy a stimulant somewhere and it's going to help correct what you have going on because it's really not. It works for a small group of people. Uh, again, it's something that um, just because Western medicine functions that way of just putting labels on things, it makes it easier for everybody to be able to, you know, find something that might help them, but it just might not be the thing that has much impact on your own health at all. And if you've tried that, then you have to, you know, you have to know that there's other things out there. You just haven't found the right thing that's causing most of your issues, and it, you know, a lot of it can be corrected. So, Zach, I'm going to start there, stop there, and uh, let you shut off the recording. Jump back in if you want. Sorry, 